This is the hole in the ozone layer above Antarctica. Its size changes seasonally and varies from year to year, but the trend is clear. The ozone is returning. The hole is shrinking. In the next few decades, it could be gone entirely. I remember when I was a kid, the hole in the ozone layer was a huge deal. So just how did we fix it? Well, it was the result of what is probably the most successful climate agreement ever ratified, but we also got a little help from the Starship Enterprise and a band of rebels from a galaxy far, far away. The ozone layer is invisible. It lies about 12 to 19 miles above my head in a part of the sky called the stratosphere. Even though I can't see it and it's just a thin layer of oxygen molecules, it protects all life on the planet from harmful ultraviolet radiation from the sun. So when scientists discovered a hole in the ozone layer, it was a big deal. In the early 70s, researchers Frank Rowland and Mario Molina discovered that CFCs remained in the atmosphere much longer than previously thought. CFC stands for chlorofluorocarbon. They have been used in refrigeration and air conditioning and as a propellant in aerosol cans. There are no natural sources of CFCs. They are entirely man-made. Since Rowland and Molina discovered that CFCs had a potential lifespan of 50 to 100 years, almost all of the CFCs released since they were first manufactured in the 1930s still remained in the atmosphere. Rowland and Molina then hypothesized that the decay of these long-lived molecules could lead to the depletion of the ozone layer. The CFC industry pushed hard against this hypothesis. They called it nonsense, and they fought to discredit Roland and Molina's statement. But only three years later, the United States National Academy of Scientists confirmed Roland and Molina's hypothesis and released a report detailing evidence of a depleting ozone layer caused by CFCs and other man-made chemicals. The ozone layer is important. As I said, it protects us from UV radiation. Besides giving you a nice tan, UV rays are also responsible for sunburns, cataracts, and skin cancer. Not only that, but they're harmful to crops and marine life. But as I said, the ozone layer is invisible. It works its magic protecting us without anyone being the wiser. And so its disappearance could easily go unnoticed. The process that leads to its depletion is complicated and relegated to high-level chemistry laboratories for the most part. And the chemical agents responsible for its depletion were crucial to a multi-billion dollar industry. So to save the ozone layer, these climate scientists had their work cut out for them. By the 1980s, they had proven that the depletion of the ozone layer was happening. Now they just had to get their message out to a largely scientifically illiterate public. They needed a way to communicate the urgency of the situation. And to do that, they basically needed to teach everyone how the ozone layer works. But they risked losing the public's attention if they made the message too complicated or technical. So they needed to simplify the science. They needed an analogy that people could relate to. Here's where Star Trek and Star Wars come in. The idea of a shield that protects your spaceship from space debris or laser blasts was a well-worn trope of science fiction by the time scientists had discovered the depletion of the ozone layer. And by far the most popular sci-fi franchises at the time, and probably still are, were Star Trek and Star Wars. Even if you'd never seen an episode of Star Trek or never watched a Star Wars movie, they were so ingrained within the popular culture that it was pretty much impossible not to be somewhat familiar with them. So if you know anything about these series at all, you know that they take place in spaceships, and these spaceships often fire rays at each other. To defend against these harmful rays, the spaceships have invisible shields. As the shield took fire, its strength was depleted. Not unlike the Earth's ozone layer when faced with harmful UV radiation. So the scientific community began comparing the ozone layer to an invisible shield that protected the Earth from UV rays. The messaging was so effective, people voluntarily gave up hairspray and aerosol cans before any widespread regulatory measures were in place. But it wasn't just the shield analogy from Star Trek and Star Wars that made people concerned for the ozone layer. The removal of a cancerous skin tumor from then President Ronald Reagan gave the prospect of increased skin cancer due to amplified levels of UV radiation a higher public profile. But when an expedition to the South Pole confirmed the existence of a hole in the ozone layer above Antarctica, the public pressure to do something about it reached fever pitch. To all the people who had absorbed the sci-fi analogy, it was like we had discovered the shields of the Starship Enterprise or the Millennium Falcon were failing in the middle of a space battle. In 1987, the Montreal Protocol was ratified by almost every nation in the world. They agreed to freeze CFC production at current levels and cut those levels in half by the end of the 20th century. The ozone layer stabilized in the 90s and recovered in the 2000s. It is expected to be at pre-1980 levels by 2070. This is why the Montreal Protocol has been called the most successful climate agreement ever. 
While the real heroes here are the scientists who did the work to prove that the ozone was really disappearing, without Star Trek and Star Wars to help the general public understand the dangers of losing the ozone layer, the efforts of these scientists might not have been as effective in swaying public opinion. Complain as much as you want about the scientific inaccuracies of Star Trek or Star Wars, their ability to make complex scientific ideas resonate with the public is unparalleled. So never underestimate the power of popular culture. So what do you think? Are there any sci-fi analogies that we could use today to help save the environment? And what'd you think of the new Star Wars? I thought it was great. Let me know in the comments. You know it's no secret that we here at The Good Stuff are not experts. We're not scientists, but we always try to think like one. And that's exactly why we've partnered with Brilliant.org. Brilliant is a problem-solving website that teaches you how to think like a scientist. So if you want to think like the scientists who discovered the hole in the ozone layer, check out their Physics for the Everyday course. They have an Out in Nature section there that can help you brush up on your knowledge of the Earth's systems and help you better understand just how this crazy world of ours works. Think about this for a moment. What effect would holes in the ozone layer have on global warming? Would they alleviate the greenhouse effect or intensify it? Brilliant takes concepts like these, breaks them up into bite-sized problems, presented in a clear, thought-provoking manner, and then builds back up to an interesting conclusion. They have courses covering a variety of subjects from the mathematics of tulip mania, to everyday physics phenomena, to the sheer, unadulterated joy of problem solving. So, to support The Good Stuff and learn more about Brilliant, go to brilliant.org slash thegoodstuff and sign up for free. The first 200 people that go to that link will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So, have fun thinking like a scientist, and thanks for watching.